The Preparation and Properties of Wöhler Siloxin Attention! In these experiments hazardous compounds are used. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the replication of these experiments. For the experiment 2 grams of silicon powder and 1.4 grams of calcium granules are mixed. When the compounds were mixed as good as possible, the mixture was quickly added to a test tube. This ensures that the calcium keeps well distributed in the mixture. Then the test tube was heated strongly with a burner until a reaction took place. Especially in the beginning, pockets of gas began to form slowly. By tapping the tube with a spatula, the pockets in the mixture were removed. The surface of the glass and maybe even the silicon have traces of water on them which react with the calcium. So the gas must be hydrogen which tends to ignite. The calcium reacts with the silicon to form calcium disilicide. It also reacts with the glass, leading to a less pure product. Nevertheless, this is not a problem for the following experiment, as quite a lot of side products are formed anyway. After cooling down, it becomes visible that not all the silicon had reacted. Most problems affecting the quality and yield can be solved by increasing the amount of the reactants or by doing the reaction in a crucible. This was not needed in my case. The calcium disilicide could be separated fairly easily because it melted together in several spots of the mixture. Removing the glass was more difficult, but it wasn't necessary to remove it completely. The calcium disilicide was quite hard, but also brittle which made it easy to break it up. Surprisingly, it had still formed crystals on the inside, despite all the circumstances. After that it was crushed with a mortar and pestle to increase the surface area, making it easier to react in the next step. Then the product was added to 100 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid. A side product is calcium silicide, which reacts with hydrochloric acid to form pyrophoric silane gas. In combination with traces of calcium, this leads to the violent reaction. Due to the heat, this step has to be done outside or in a fume hood, because large amounts of hydrogen chloride are released. The mixture was left to sit for 35 minutes and stirred occasionally. In this time, the calcium disilicide reacts slowly with the acid to form Wöhler siloxine. It's a compound with a hexagonal structure. This forms layers of silicon atoms to which hydrogen and hydroxyl groups are attached. These layers are stacked on each other and are connected by dipolar interactions due to the attached groups. In the reaction, the color of the mixture very slowly changes to a brown-green color. To dilute the acid, the mixture was added to 100 ml of distilled water. Unfortunately, it had to be left overnight, but this was not a problem. All the solids had collected at the bottom and the color of the xyloxine became more visible. Then the xyloxine was filtered off. This took quite some time, so I would do a vacuum filtration the next time. The xyloxine should be used immediately for the following experiments because it slowly oxidizes in air. First some were spread out in a porcelain dish. Then the lights were turned off and potassium permanganate was carefully sprinkled over the xyloxine which still had traces of acid on it. An orange chemoluminescence can be observed.
When the reaction is over, a spatula can be used to mix, which leads to more chemiluminescence. Out of curiosity, hydrogen peroxide was tested as the oxidizer, but the reaction was very slow. Only when adding potassium ferricyanide as a catalyst, the chemiluminescence became visible. Next the measuring cylinder was filled with 100 milliliters of 10% hydrochloric acid and placed on a stirring plate. Two spatulas of xyloxine were added while stirring. Xyloxine is insoluble in all common solvents, so this is just a suspension. In the dark a spatula full of potassium permanganate was added quickly. This time the chemiluminescence was way weaker than in the previous experiments. It might have been possible that the intensity was depending on the concentration, so the experiment was repeated in a 25 ml cylinder. Unfortunately there was no difference. In UV light xyloxine is fluorescent and according to some sources it should exhibit triboluminescence and phosphorescence, but I couldn't confirm that in my experiments. It can also act as a weak reducing agent, so it reduces copper ions in an acidic copper 2 sulfate solution. Nevertheless, this can only be made visible by filtration of the suspension or by using a centrifuge. The blue color of the copper 2 ions is removed quickly after a short while. An alternative to reacting calcium and silicon is using calcium disilicide in the beginning if available. Here the reaction is way more calm and way less heat is released. This leads to less hydrogen chloride being released in the reaction. Here the formation of the xyloxine can be seen way easier in time lapse. After 35 minutes the mixture was added to the same amount of distilled water. The properties of this xyloxine are the same in the shown experiments. This were the preparation and properties of Wöhler xyloxine. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see more experiments about chemiluminescence you can watch my video here or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.